Welcome to Rethink, the podcast that empowers you to challenge your existing beliefs and embrace new, more productive ways of thinking. Here at Rethink, we believe that the key to self-fulfillment lies in shattering old thought patterns and adopting new mindsets that support personal growth and empowerment. With expert guests and thought leaders from a wide range of fields, we explore strategies and insights that can help you achieve success and fulfillment in all areas of your life. From relationships to career, business ownership, and health, you are the source of your own success. We're just here to help you tap into your true potential and create a brighter future. So join us on the journey of personal growth and empowerment, and let's rethink what's possible for our lives. Hey guys, welcome back into the podcast. Today is December the... 20th, and we are moving forward swiftly uh, forward with our 13 days until 2024. We started a few days ago on December the 18th, and we're doing content every day. We are rethinking and reviewing, summarizing uh, much of what we talked about this year with um, two focuses. One, to, you know, give you a a collective summary of some of the more key areas that we discussed this year, but two to line us up for 2024, we're going to be changing our format on the show a little bit. You're going to get daily content with the exception of the weekends. And Hey, it's just um, a good time to be listening to the podcast. So if this is your first time, welcome in. You have reached us uh, at the uh, tail end of our third season. So that means you've got uh, the former side of that to go back and listen to this. I think it's episode 36. So you got 35 other episodes to listen to uh, for season three. And then you go back to seasons two and one. What better time to do it? The holidays are coming up and many of us are traveling. So why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the podcast so you don't forget who we are and where we are. And while you're sitting in the airport or on the airplane or in that long car drive or standing in a line, what better to do? Then empower yourself by listening to Rethink Podcast. Old timers, thank you guys so much for continuing to support the podcast. I know you're going to enjoy what we've got planned for you for the rest of this year, uh, as well as next year, as well as next year. Um, So make sure that you are continuing to uh, promote the podcast by sharing, sharing your uh, favorite episode. And this may be it. Share an episode that you like a lot or one that you think. One of your friends, colleagues, associates, family members, loved one, whoever, your neighbor, find an episode you think they would find interesting or one that you like in particular and share it and encourage them to listen. Um, Yeah, do that. Do that. Do that. And today we're going to go over because today's content, we're, we're rethinking relationships. That's what we're talking about today. So in this rethink series, uh, we started on the 18th. So if you you just started out today, you got to go back and listen. Starting on the 18th, 19th, and today is relationships. Tomorrow's health and wellness. Uh, the 22nd is work life balance. On the 23rd, we're going to be talking about rethinking learning. The 24th, Christmas Eve. Yep, Christmas Eve. We're going to be talking about giving and generosity. Uh, on Christmas Day, I'm going to record rethinking traditions. Rethinking traditions. So. That'll get us through at least Christmas. And then we've got the week following. So you're going to get content every day and it's going to be empowering. It's going to be encouraging and it's going to be informative. The last thing I'll ask you to do before we jump in today is please don't forget to give us a a five star review. We are on every podcast platform from Google to Pandora to Amazon, you name it, we're out there. Um, Spotify, you guys know us there very well because a lot of you guys are listening to us on Spotify. Thank you so much for doing so. Give us a uh, a review, uh, preferably five-star review, and uh, that helps us to be found by folks who are looking and searching for content, podcasts in our genre. So please do that. And I hope you guys are having a really good holiday season. Uh, said a thousand times before on the show that this is my favorite time of the year. It just goes by so fast. It just goes by so fast. I, I forgot to tell you guys, um, uh, my birthday was in November. I think I may have mentioned that, but I uh, have been going to Disney World for a, a, a long, long time. 
And COVID sort of, you know, kind of threw our plans off. Every year, my family and I would go down for a little while, uh, right before Thanksgiving holiday, and, and just hang out with Mickey and Minnie and Daffy and all these guys. Donald, I'm sorry, I went over to uh, Warner Brothers. Uh, but anyway, I was in between going this year. And long story short, I decided to go. And this is the first time I actually went to the parks by myself as an adult. Yeah, it was strange. It was it was different. But I had a fantastic time. And I don't know, maybe, you know, at some point I'll talk to you guys about that a little bit more in detail. Uh, my daughters and I do have a Disney podcast. And we're deciding on whether we're going to keep it or not and how frequently we're going to be able to do it. But I would like to talk to you guys about it. I don't know. You tell me on the Facebook page that you guys want to want to hear it. I mean, uh, it'll, it'll be a little different than what we're, what you're used to. But anyway, I went. I had a great time and uh, just kind of including you in on some things that I do personally. Uh, uh, two days. Yeah, two days. I was I was down. That was plenty, plenty for me. I was able to see all the things I wanted to see. And ride certain attractions that I hadn't been on. For example, Tron was a new attraction or was just being built when I was down there last. And I got a chance to be on Tron. I got a chance to meet a lot of cool people. Yeah, it was just a good visit. Good weather, you know. Uh, So anyway, I didn't mention that to you guys. I thought I'd mention it to you. Uh, If you decide to go to Walt Disney World now, this being the latter part of the year, you are a trooper because you are picking the uh, most difficult times to go in terms of crowd level. But hey, I've done Walt Disney World for Christmas before with 18 family members. So yeah, I, I, I'm a, I'm a, a trooper and a soldier for, for Disney. And I love it. We had a fantastic time. So uh, just putting that out there. All right, so let's get, let's get focused. Rethinking. We are summarizing from earlier podcasts this year. At the end of this podcast, I'm going to recommend you go back and listen to a couple uh, related podcasts. I'm going to give you the names of those and uh, episode numbers as well. I will refer you to a couple different uh, books. Uh, I did so yesterday in Rethinking Productivity. If you didn't listen to that, I offered you three different books at the end that you can listen or I'm sorry, read or you can listen to if you get an audio book. Uh, but go back, listen to. Uh, you know, rethink productivity if you haven't heard it yet. Relationships, 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 rethink relationships, navigating modern dynamics uh, with communication and understanding. Uh, if you are new to the podcast, let me explain something. What we do here is we rethink old things in new ways for one purpose, and that is to increase or improve the quality of our life. We're going to increase, you know, the amount of good decisions that we're making. And therefore, we believe that would improve improve the quality of our of our lives. And in this case, uh, for this podcast, we always try to think non-traditionally. We always try to uh, prod you and poke you into non-traditional thought patterns, because traditionally, if these things haven't worked for you, then certainly there is a different and or better way. Different doesn't always mean better, but uh, perhaps there is. So we offer it to you to try to see. So today, relationships. We want to reflect on this year, for example, uh, the standout theme about relationships in the modern world. We talked a lot about relationships. Now, this is your personal relationships, your romantic relationships. But quite honestly, your whole life is built around relationships, whether it is your employees, uh, whether it is your team members, you know, at your uh, place of, of work. Uh, family members, it's all relationships. So relationships where personal or professional have undergone a significant transformation influenced by, yes, societal changes and also technological advancements and technological uh, changes. We have almost a culture, a, um, well, maybe I did say that right. We have almost a culture now where people would rather text you than talk to you. And I know people in my age group don't 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 agree with that because we don't do that. We still pick up the phone. We still like to, you know, touch and actually see people in face, uh, you know, face to face. But there's a. You know, two generations behind us, maybe even yeah, a third one coming along that they prefer to text. They prefer to to, uh, you know, have this electronic relationship with folks. We're going to talk a little bit about that. So understanding modern relationship dynamics. This is where we're going to start. 
Today's relationships are more diverse and more complex than in the past, based on what I just said. They transcend traditional boundaries and therefore definitions, uh, calling for a more open and a more flexible approach, you know, to people in general. With the rise of digital communication, long distance relationships have become more common, for example. And social media has also changed how we interact and perceive each other. It really, really has, guys. It really has. So communication. Communication has always been the cornerstone to relationships. So it's no different with these modern relationships. Effective communication stands as a pillar of strong, healthy relationships in today's fast-paced world. So it involves basically just talking, but it also encompasses what if you go back to, um, let's see, what podcast was that? I'm going to make sure I'm telling you right. Uh, The Power of Words in Relationships. This is episode 26. Uh, We talked about one thing in particular, and it just points itself out every time I bring it up, and that is active listening. The one thing I find in relationships a lot of people do not do, and especially actively, is listen. What is active listen? Listening. Active listening is just what it sounds like. You allow the person you're communicating with to communicate to you their points of view. Listen, you're not constructing a response. You're not interrupting. You're allowing them to get their point across to you. You're actively listening. Uh, You want to also imply empathy and your ability to express yourself clearly and respectfully. So that is the cornerstone of relationships, communication. So there are one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven. So we've got about eight different um, ideas. I'm going to go with you really quick. And these are ideas and uh, methodologies that we've already talked about in prior podcasts. I'm going to refer you back to them, but this is sort of a summary. So this is like, hey, I've been in class all year and we just summarize before we take the test, except there's really no test. We already talked about active listening, which is engaging in active listening by giving your full attention, acknowledging the speaker's feelings and providing feedback when it is time to provide feedback. Okay, don't interrupt, folks. Let them get their thoughts out. This practice builds a deeper understanding and connection with whoever you're communicating with. Again, doesn't have to be romantic. It can be at work. It can be, you know, just in general. You can be playing golf with this person. You can be, uh, I don't know, anywhere at Walt Disney World by yourself and just talking to someone in line. It's just always kind. It's really cool, but it shows a level of maturity when you listen and then you don't interrupt people. All right. Number two, emotional intelligence. Uh, Cultivate emotional intelligence to better understand and respond to your own emotions and to the emotions of others by listening. This leads to more uh, empathy and meaningful interactions. Uh, Open and honest dialogue as a part of communication. Encourage open and honest communication, honest conversations about what? Well, about your needs, about their needs, about your expectations, about their expectations, about your boundaries, about their boundaries. Honesty in these areas fosters trust and it prevents misunderstanding. Now, I've been married for a long, long time. I've been with my wife 30 years. We've been married 28 years. Uh, much of what I'm telling you now, I learned in the latter part of my life, meaning the last 10 years or so, you know, 10, 12. mm, Yeah, I would say the last 10 to 15 years. And so that means the first part of my (laughs) relationship, my marriage, it was just trial and error. You know, and God bless my wife. I know I couldn't have been an easy person to deal with. And she may, may have said the same. Everybody have their opportunity to grow in relationships. I can only tell you from my perspective because I knew what was going on in my head at the time when I was a younger person, and I didn't know much of what I'm telling you now. So you can get the head start. Younger people listening to this podcast, you can get a head start and actually start implementing some of these techniques, and you can avoid some of the issues that you see maybe uh, other folks having in terms of communication. Uh, Because it's really not an issue you can have in your relationship that good communication can't solve. Uh, or even prevent uh, many times. Well, I won't go into that, but good communication is the key. 
So what are some non-traditional approaches to relationship building? Let's talk about that. What are some uh, uh, non-traditional approaches? Number one, a digital detox. Uh, This is consistent across a lot of what we've talked about this year. Uh, Because there's so much digital um, elements, there's so many digital elements to our lives nowadays, it's important. No different than if your diet, you know, a lot of people detox because they realize that within the foods that they're eating, there are a lot of preservatives, there's a lot of sugars, there's a lot of different things in the things they're drinking. So you just want to cleanse your body. You just want to detox it. So you got to kind of take that same methodology to your mental space. So this era is, is completely dominated by technology. We have it socially, and many of us have it because we, we need it for work and just to, you know, communicate, quite honestly, with people in our lives, people that we work with. Periodically, though, it's important to unplug from these digital devices and provide yourself an opportunity to build a one-on-one relationship with whoever you're trying to build a relationship with. Could be your kids. Could be your kids. If you're in the house, uh, it's easy to call someone now on the phone that's upstairs and ask them a question as opposed to getting up and going, right? I've done it. You've done it. You could text. But listen, you don't want to do that over a, 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 a long period of time. You don't want that to be your relationship with your kid or with your spouse or with your partner. Yep, you got to get up and walk upstairs and actually ask the question, make the request, and then come back downstairs and finish doing what you were doing, like we used to do in the old days. The point is digital detox. Um, put the devices down, create some space around you where dig- it's a digital free zone. That should sound familiar to you guys if you've been listening. We create digital free zones in our home, digital free time in our homes. You want to be able to encourage a meaningful face-to-face interaction with those people who you care about. Show your commitment to being present. Put the phones down. If you're having a movie night or a game night, please make that a digital free space and area and time in your home because you guys could all be having very different experiences if you don't put these devices down. Number two, quality time over quantity. This is an important one. We all have busy schedules. Um, It's up to us to make the adjustments in terms of time. Uh, It's not always possible to spend large amounts of time together. Uh, When you do have the time to spend together, focus on the quality of that time being spent as opposed to the quantity. Example, uh, you and your spouse or your partner uh, both have very busy work schedules. And maybe throughout the day, you only have, outside of the time that you guys are sleeping, you know, in the same bed or whatever, you only have a few hours a day. And that's pretty common. So if you're a commuter and you don't work from home, of course, and both of you are commuters, then you may be passing each other on the street. Or getting in late, you know, six, seven, eight o'clock at night. So you only have a little bit of time. My point is make it a, make it quality. Make it quality. Always make it a point to put your devices down when you come in the house. Always make it a point to ask each other how your day has been, how his or her day has been. Always make it a point to focus on them for those two hours or three hours that you are together. Maybe you only are able to take one vacation a year or one vacation every two or three years. I don't know your financial situation. But whatever that time is, make sure that you plan time with your family, with your loved ones to really enjoy that time. So you don't have a lot of vacations, but maybe you just have one or two, but you make those one or two very uh, quality, you know, very much enhanced by your focus on quality instead of quantity. Uh, I got tongue tied there. I don't know what word I was trying to say. All right. So we talked about digital detox, quality time over quantity. And then next is shared experiences, engage in new activities together, share those experiences. Uh, example, you can be taking a class or you can be traveling. My wife and I love to travel, my wife more than me. But I go along and I tend to like it once I'm wherever we're going. But we we share those times together. What this does is deepens our bonds and it creates lasting memories. I mean, it really does. This year alone, um, man, we went a lot of places. Uh, and we're very thankful, number one, that we're able to do it. 
But number two, we we see a difference in our relationship because of the time that we spend together. And of course, when we're together, um, a lot of times we are talking, but many times we're not. But the fact that we're together and we've been together so long, there's a lot in relationships like ours that can go unsaid. You know, we can be sitting on the tube in London or we can be sitting on the bus in Chicago and we could just be there together and we can sense each other's, um, you know, energy and the way that we feel. If you're not at 28 or 30 years in a relationship, then, yeah, you got to talk and you want to share how you're feeling about maybe you don't like Chicago. You don't want to come back. Maybe you don't like London, which is heresy because London is awesome. Uh, but whatever the case is, uh, communicate and share experiences while you're doing so. Uh, mindful relationships, non-traditional approaches to relationship building. We're on number four, mindful relationships. You want to be able to practice mindfulness in your interactions. What does that mean? Mindfulness simply means being fully present during conversations. You ever talk to someone, been talking to someone, and their eyes begin to wander, or they interrupt you, or these days they look at their phone. It, it is so rude to do that. Uh, give the other person your undivided attention. You're not going to be there forever. Like you can check your phone when you walk away. Mindful relationships, mindful communication has to do with you being fully present during these conversations. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's an offer we thought you'd be interested in. Are you looking to develop and create stunning coursework? Uh, launch your stunning academy website in a snap. You can choose from among 50 plus designer made, ready to go, industry specific site templates to launch your website fast and with confidence. It's very simple, very powerful. They're flexible courses. You can wave goodbye to dull educational content. There are countless ways to package and distribute your learning content. Create listed or private courses that can be paid or free courses, or you can drip feed your content to build and to nurture your audience the way that you want. You can create compelling and interactive courses, leverage the most rich library of learning activities and undoubtedly the most customizable course player in the market to build flexible learning experiences to keep your listeners engaged. And lastly, be the boss of your content and design your final course product exactly as you envision it. Preview it as you build it in real time. Get it up and running fast than you ever have imagined. Why don't you go down the show notes, guys, today and uh, click on Learns World. If you're interested in building courses that matter, you can monetize, create memberships, create courses, and create passive income for yourself. So support our sponsor, Learns World. With a calm and non-reactive mindset. The only thing I would add to that is also with a solution-oriented perspective. Always go into conflict with the purpose of a solution. Be solution-oriented, not problem-oriented. You have been around people and you know what the problem is, but they continue to restate the problem, you know, just different words. Be solution-oriented. Be the person in your group that wants to find the solution. Be the leader. Be that person that is focused on solution. All right, lastly, continue personal growth. Personal growth, personal development is the, well, not the, but it's one of the largest themes of this podcast. You should, in my humble opinion, always be engaged in personal development. That is always a necessity. I don't care whether it's just for you, and it should be primarily for you. Your uh, friends and loved ones and coworkers are benefit you know, benefactors of your personal growth, but I want to encourage you and support you and others uh, to always insist on personal growth. We're going to be in 2024 soon. We should be thinking about what we accomplished this year in 2023 and what we need to do in 2024. And we begin to look at our individual interests, those things that we really have a passion about, a passion for, begin to make a list. 
What do I want to do in 2024? Look at what I completed in 2023. How can this help people? A balance of shared goals and personal development can lead to a harmonious relationship. So within your relationship, if you guys, I hope you do, have uh, many things in common, perhaps it's helping other people focus on shared goals and also personal development. What are some daily practices, Kelly, for enhancing relationships? Uh, Number one, you can start each day with a positive affirmation about your relationship. You don't have to uh, do this with your partner. This is what, you know, this is what you are agreeing upon. Uh, So set and use the law of assumption, law of attraction. Set your intention that you have a positive, you know, relationship and that you are not only a benefactor, but you are also providing benefits to your partner or your spouse. Uh, Practice active listening. We already talked about that in your daily interactions with whoever you're fostering this relationship with. Set aside a few minutes each day to unplug. Yep, digital detox. And get connected with your loved ones. If you you don't do this on a regular basis, I encourage you to do that. Put your phone down. Be the leader in this uh, uh, case because people are so programmed. So be the leader, be an example, put your phones down and encourage game time, encourage, you know, family dinners and stuff like that, which we still have in my house, by the way. I've done that my whole life. We've always sat at the table uh, together and eat. Now, there are some times on Fridays we want to watch a movie and we'll take the food into the den or living room or whatever. But for the most part, our, my whole life, I've eaten dinner with my family. When I was a kid, I ate my mom and my grandparents, my brothers and sister. As an adult person, my wife, and then our first child, second, et cetera, et cetera. You get the point. It is valuable time. It will be limited, but valuable. Why? Kids grow up and leave. They grow up and, and leave, and you're going to want that time and not be able to get it. So I'm encouraging you to do it now, especially if you're young parents. Set the tone. Uh, Share your thoughts and your feelings openly and respectfully. And then lastly, express gratitude. It's always, always appropriate to express gratitude and appreciation for your partner or your loved ones daily. Now, this is something we can all improve on. I know my wife knows that I love her. But I also know that she likes to hear it. Okay, your partner, your loved one, your kids your mom, your dad, whoever, I believe they probably know you care about them, but wouldn't it be nice to hear it? Just think about it when someone tells you that, how they are grateful for you and how they love you. It makes you feel better, right? Well, you can make someone else feel good. Just unexpectedly go up, show your gratitude for that person. Hey, hey, listen, all year long, you've Put up with me. <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. All year long, you've been committed to school, let's say. I've seen you work very hard uh, to maintain your grade point average. I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. Or, hey, you know what? I just wanted to tell you, you know, I love you. Um, and this is our 20, uh, we're going on 29 years or whatever the case may be. And I just really appreciate uh, you spending your life with me and giving me, you know, my children. Right. We're moving into a new year, so it's important that we carry these types of insights and practices because we're going to be building. We're going to be building. We we want to keep these uh, little blocks of uh, information in place because we're going to put other stuff on top of these blocks. And it's important that we have the foundational blocks in place. Like we talked about goal setting. We talked about productivity. We're now talking about relationships. We're going to get in deeper to other things. It's important that we have these fundamental principles in place. So 2024 comes, we begin to build more, build our houses bigger, stronger, uh, taller. We have these things in place. So uh, I told you I was going to give you two podcasts to go back and reference, and here they are. I'm going to put them in the show notes as well. Number one is the power of words in relationships. Again, this is Rethinking Relationships. The Power of Words was a series that we did this year. That series had to do with your innate creative ability, your innate inherent creative ability using words. How are they using relationships? How can they be used to build your relationships? That was episode 26 that was done on November the 2nd. The power 
of words and relationships. And then the other is the art of communication. The art of communication was done on May 21st, and it was episode number nine in season three. All the both these are in season three. I didn't go any further back. Although you probably can go back yourself, but I just for this year is what I, what the focus was. So there are two. There'll be in the show notes. You can refer back to those if you haven't listened to those. Now, what else do I have for you today? Well, I don't want to close out until I give you three book recommendations that can provide additional insights and strategies for building and rethinking relationships. Number one is nonviolent communication. It's a language of life by Marshall B. Rosenberg, PhD. Here's why it's relevant. Rosenberg's book offers a powerful tool for improving personal and professional relationships through compassionate communication. It teaches readers how to express themselves authentically and empathetically. You can foster mutual respect and understanding with some of the concepts in this book. Again, Nonviolent Communication, A Language of Life by Marshall B. Rosenberg, Ph.D. The next book is Emotional Intelligence, Why It Matters More Than Your IQ. This is pretty interesting. Let me get this book. This is by Daniel Goldman. Why is it relevant? Goldman's groundbreaking book delves into the importance of emotional intelligence, your EQ, not your IQ, in personal success and relationships. It provides a comprehensive look at how self-awareness, self-regulation, empathy, and social skills impact our interactions and relationships. Complementing this podcast focus on emotional intelligence, not in intellectual in enhancing relationships. Again, the name of the book is Emotional Intelligence, Why It Can Matter More Than Your IQ. This is by Daniel Goldman. The last book I'll offer you is The Relationship Cure. Since we're talking relationship, The Relationship Cure. Here's a five-step guide to strengthening your marriage, strengthening your family, and also strengthening your friendship. This is by a gentleman named John Gottman, G-O-T-T-M-A-N. Why is it relevant? Gottman's work is a renowned relation. He, well, Gottman is a relationship uh, expert. He offers practical advice on improving relationships through emotional connection and understanding. His book is based on extensive research. It provides strategies for building and sustaining strong, healthy relationships. Resonating with this podcast theme on navigating modern relationship dynamics. Here's the thing about relationship dynamics. They're constantly changing. They're constantly changing. If you're with someone as long as I've been, not as much, but they are. But if you're out in the open marketplace, let's say, you're dating and trying to, you know, do all this other stuff, then, man, it's very different dating now than when I was out there. Or at least it appears to be. Okay? It appears to be. Uh, I, I only have a perception because I'm not out there. I'm only seeing what I'm, I mean, telling you what I hear. And I have friends who are single, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just, that's, that's my observation from listening. Uh, I do think though, because I'm, I'm very in tune, as you know, into power of assumption and setting your intention. I just believe ultimately you get what you give, you get what you give, you attract to you what belongs to you. And I just think a lot of people just are not aware conceptually of those facts. Uh, all right, guys. So that's it today. Rethinking relationships will be here tomorrow. As I said, we are working our way into the new year. Tomorrow, we're talking health and wellness. Tomorrow, we're talking health and wellness on Rethink 2023. Thank you guys so much for uh, hanging out with me all the way to the end. If you're new, don't leave the podcast until you subscribe. If you're old, please continue to share the podcast and make sure that you go check in on our Facebook page, which I did remember this time to put in the show notes. Forgot the last time, but I did remember this time. And uh, yeah, just keep checking out the show notes because there's some free giveaways down there. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. That's all for today's episode of Rethink. We hope that you've enjoyed this exploration of new ideas and perspectives and found valuable insights and strategies that you can apply to your life. Remember, you are the source of your own success and fulfillment. And by embracing new ways of thinking, you can unlock your true potential and yes, create the life that you truly desire. 
Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, we encourage you to support the podcast by sharing it with your friends, your family members, your loved ones and associates, and even your followers on social media. Also, leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Lastly, don't forget to check out our show notes for free downloads and empowering ebooks that can help you on your journey of personal growth and empowerment. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We look forward to exploring more ideas and insights with you in the next episode of Rethink.